Do I look okay? Lighting looks good. Facebook is taking a moment, um, but it should be up in a second. Okay, it is now live. So you feel free to begin whenever you're ready. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much, Lexi, I appreciate it. My name is Dr. Aloisa Clementich and I'm president and CEO at Invest Atlanta. And it's my pleasure to be with you here tonight to explain and to talk about some of the opportunities that we have currently available. So I did wanna just take a quick second and say that the city of Atlanta received $88 million from the Department of Treasury as a result of the CARES Act. The request from Department of Treasury was to really help cities and businesses and individuals as we all are dealing with the new reality with COVID. So the city council uh, and the mayor, and I thank both of them for their commitment to the city, really had to make some choices about what to do with the 88 million. They have put 22 million in affordable housing and 22 million for a small business. So please uh, thank our council members and the mayor, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, for their dedication to our small businesses, which leads us here to where we are today. There are two programs that I'm going to be speaking about. The first is the resurgence plan, which I'll get into details. And the second is strength and beauty, two opportunities that will be available at now, actually the application open on the 10th through August 31st. All right, so let's just jump right in. The resurgence grant. What is the grant purpose? So as I mentioned earlier, the Department of Treasury provided these funds and has really provided a lot of guidance, well, a lot of guidance on how these funds can and cannot be used. And what they've said is that these grants, so they are grants, have to be used for businesses that are addressing the negative economic impact of the measures taken to control the, the COVID-19 virus that is in our country. Okay, so let me give you some examples of what kind of expenses we can cover as a result of this grant. First off, let's say you're a small business or let's say you're a restaurant and you have to physically move some of your booths to allow for six feet social distancing. Those expenses would be covered. Or how about if you're a business and you need to buy that plexiglass to protect not only your employee, but your customers, those expenses will be covered. How about if you have to buy PPE, face mask, all of that expense, you would not have to have had to incur those expenses. And this is key if it was not for COVID-19. So again, these expenses can cover any, any expense that you have made as a result of you complying to COVID-19. Now, a good source of information, if I can, it's on our website, is the CDC guidelines and OSHA guidelines on how a business and what a business can do to reopen. If any of those suggestions have a cost, those are costs that can be covered as a result of COVID-19. In other words, you would have not made that investment had COVID-19 not been where we are today, okay? All right, so the next thing you're gonna ask me is, hey, Eloisa, but how much is the grant for? The grant total is $50,000 to a small business. And the way we're breaking it out is $40,000 is a reimbursable grant to businesses that go directly to the business to help cover those costs that we just talked about. Again, anything that helps a business prepare to do business and be successful post COVID. The other, the other is $10,000 for technical assistance. Total grant amount 50,000, 40 direct cash infusion into the business with reimbursable receipts and the other 10,000 specifically for technical assistance. And again, this is all tied to a business and how it is going to have to change or provide um, support as a result of COVID-19. Now let's talk about that technical assistance piece for just a moment. Not only are the thought behind this 
this grant was not only did we want to provide the direct infusion of cash to the business, but we also wanted to provide that technical assistance because we fundamentally know that businesses are going to have to change some of them or pivot their business model under COVID. And so perhaps you need technical assistance to help you with how your business should be shaped or what you should potentially do or, or what, what you need to change in terms of your customer and your format. So you're gonna have to pivot. Uh, maybe you need legal services to help you with some sort of liability form that can happen. Or maybe you need technical assistance around your website and how you handle this new traffic of people purchasing online since they're not coming into your store. So those are the type of, type of assistance that you will have available to you. And again, InvestLine is providing you a list of technical assistance providers and you'll be able to choose. You will be able, once you get approved, you will be able to choose from four Invest Atlanta bundles of services. And you can decide to go to one technical assistance provider or four technical assistance providers, whatever it is that you may need, okay? So that's the technical assistance piece. Now I have gotten some questions. How about if a business says, Eloisa, that's great, I appreciate it, but I don't need any technical assistance. Can I move my $10,000 to the 40,000? The answer is no. The max you can get on the grant is $40,000 for the cash infusion. And the max is the technical assistance piece. So just want to be very clear. The second is, I've also been asked is, what happens if I'm only interested in the technical assistance piece? I would tell you that's no problem. You can apply and say you're interested in the technical assistance piece. But I will tell you that it's my assumption that every business is having to buy something to prepare for COVID, whether it's PPP, masks, plexiglass, something. Um, so make sure you, you don't miss out the opportunity to put what it is and how much you want. Now in the application, we specifically are gonna ask you this question, how much are you applying for? The max being 40,000, but how much would you like to apply for? And so that question is specifically for the grant infusion and we're looking for your response. Okay, so we know about what the purpose of the grant is and now we know about how much of it is available to you. What are your eligibility requirements? There are four basic eligibility requirements for you to be able to receive this grant. The first is you have to have an active city of Atlanta business license. If you don't have an active city of Atlanta business license and you have a lot business license from another city, I sorry to tell you, you're not eligible for our program, but please, my colleagues in DeKalb and Gwinnett also have programs for small business. Please see their websites to see what is available to you. The second is you have to have been in business and operating since March 1st, 2019. You have to have less than 250 employees as of March 1st, 2020, and that this is key. You have to demonstrate that your business has had a business interruption as a result of COVID-19. This is essential for Department of Treasury. So please make sure you expand on that question. Now, there are some other uh, eligibility requirements on our website. So please take a look at our program overview and our program frequently asked questions. I will also mention that there are some businesses that are ineligible. Uh, please go ahead and take a look at that complete list. But to give you an idea of the ineligible businesses, if you are an adult entertainment company, you are ineligible. If you are in the financial, uh, financial institutions, you are ineligible. If you are an employee of the city of Atlanta or invest Atlanta and have a business in the city of Atlanta, you are ineligible. So that just gives you a sense, but the full list is on our website. All right, let's look at the application requirements. Again, I wanna just highly emphasize that we really try to be conscious of your time. We really try to understand what Department of Treasury was asking for and making sure that we were in compliance and really balancing both. So what we've asked is for you to upload basically nine items to your application. This would be your driver's license, copy of your driver's license, your payroll documentation for the final February, 2020 payroll, any reimbursable receipts that you have, 
Now remember this grant is a reimbursable grant. So I'm gonna need copy of the receipts that you've spent. So the receipt timeline will be anywhere from March 1st, 2020 to November 1st, 2020. So again, when you think about that question, how much money are you applying for? You can look at how much you've spent and how much you think you will spend. And that will be really the number that you wanna put there. Then you are gonna ask for your 2020 City of Atlanta business license, your 2020 Secretary of State registration, your 2019 and year to date June 30th profit and loss statement, your 2018, 2019 business tax returns, your save affidavit and your W-9. Now I have been asked by several folks, Eloisa, why are you asking for the save affidavit? Because it's the law, it's the law in the state of Georgia. So we have to get the save affidavit. So what I, the save affidavit, please take this in mind, does require the form to be notarized. We recognize that many of us are sheltering in our homes and are, are limiting our um, trips outside of our house. If that's the case for you, we have a link on the application in our website that you could go to that gives you a list of notaries that will notarize your document online. So we really, really uh, have tried to think about how we can help you make this as easy as possible. The next is the W-9 form, which is a simple form that everybody has been able to find. But again, we have that online as well, should you need a copy. Now, there's three things that not specifically I am asking, um, or we are asking for you to upload, but we, I wanted to mention here so that you fully understand what the commitment will be. If awarded, we're asking for three basic things. First is would your co company commit to providing a compliance report within one year? Now, I do want to give you a sense of what that report is asking. It's nothing going to be major. It really is our way to verify how you're doing one year later, how many employees, is there any information I can get you? Are you interested in WorkSource Atlanta programs? So it really is our way to check in on you just to ensure that you're being as successful as possible here in the city. Simple questions. The second is we are asking you to please be willing to perform 15 hours of community service within a year. So this is about one hour a month of community service. Why are we doing that? And, and we've left it open. You can be any nonprofit in the city of Atlanta. The reason we're doing this is because the city of Atlanta received $88 million. The council and the mayor had to make very tough decisions of where those funds would go. And so since they are for the benefit of city of Atlanta residents, we thought this was a good way for us to, as businesses and those awarded, to give back to those that are supporting us with this program. And the last is your commitment as a business to maintaining your employees. Every business in this city is important because it provides a service, it provides uh, amenities for our residents, but also it provides jobs. And we wanna do all we can to keep as many Atlantans employed as possible. All right, so we've talked about the grant amount, the grant purpose, the eligibility. Let me just go in very quickly into the application. Three basic sections in the application. The first one is eligibility, pretty much yes, no questions. And the reason for that is we wanted to ensure that we, you didn't spend all your time in completing the application and then at the end find out you're not eligible. So again, that was the purpose of that. And we really think that's a very fast section. It's yes or no questions. The second section is really your contact information, basic information about your company. We believe you have that information readily available. Your name, your address, are you a veteran owned business, et cetera. The last section, which is the section C, you're gonna have several more questions here. And we have two specific questions I wanna highlight for you. The first is we are gonna ask you, how has your business been impacted by COVID? Please, please take the time to tell us how you've been impacted. If you write a sentence, oh, I've been impacted and uh, you know, having a hard time, it really doesn't tell us anything. Please tell us 
What what is the status of your revenue? Has your revenue gone up? Has your revenue gone down? Has it, how about your inventory? How about your employees? How about the neighborhood? Those are your providing services too. The more information you could provide us, the better it will be and the more competitive your application will be. So please take the time to fill in that section. The next one is, is what is your plans or what will your plans be for your reopening? So if you have reopened, how did you do it? And are you gonna have to modify going forward? And if you haven't, then what are you gonna do? This is important for treasury because remember these funds have to be used to help support businesses deal with this new health pandemic. And we have to ensure that anything that it's going to require for you to change or adapt to is clearly listed in your application. We are hopeful if you have all those documents that I listed in the previous slide, it should take you about an hour and an hour or a half to complete the application. So please, please start your application now. The last thing, so we know about the grant amount, we know about the purpose, we know about eligibility, you know about the application and what to expect. The last thing is the timeline. What are some key dates? So the application opened August 10th. We actually have our live stream tonight and you are on and thank you for participating. The application will close August 31st at 5 p.m. I am completely asking you, please fill it out and submit it. As soon as you submit, we will begin to communicate with you. Now, the program, Department of Treasury has been very clear to us. The program ends December 31st. So you, I, another question I get, well, Eloisa, if the program closes December 31st, why are you making me submit receipts only up until November 1st? Department of Treasury has been very clear. If we have not spent, not allocated, spent the money, that means the money is out the door by December 31st, guess what? That money goes back to Treasury. And you know what? I'm going to be working very hard and diligently to ensure that not, well, it's hard to get to an actual dollar, but that N the very little, the, the smallest amount as possible can be returned to Department of Treasury. I want every dollar that we possibly can get to be spent here in the city of Atlanta. So that's going to require us to watch very closely our balances. So our request to our businesses, send us receipts until November 1. We recalibrate where there are. And then if there is any funds left, so let's assume that we gave someone an award of up to 30,000, making this up, and they only spent 10,000, then we would make sure that that 20,000 gets reallocated to another business and we'll go next to the next business. So again, this is very important for us to ensure that at least we're maximizing as much as we can, as many dollars as possible here in the city of Atlanta. We want to make sure that every business has the opportunity to participate that we can. Now, based on where we are today, we suspect that we were gonna be able to help somewhere around 400 businesses. It will depend because every business is gonna ask for a different amount. So depending on those amounts, but we suspect it will be somewhere around 400 businesses. So watch out for that um, as we go through the process. Some important things to remember, and this is we've seen now come up several times, so I just wanted to make sure that I bring them up to you today. The first, if you can help us, the business name should be the same as the Secretary of State, so ensure that your business name is the same. If it's not, I'd advise that you include a statement as to why it's not the same and help us connect the owner to the business. Now, in terms of the re reimbursable grants, because remember, Treasury said very clearly, this is a reimbursable grant, which means you have to do the expense first, and then we reimburse you. Is all your receipts that we're going to ask you for need to be itemized with a description? Now, I personally have gone to Home Depot, and I've purchased something, and it puts the name of the product but had I known that receipt or came back to that receipt a month later, I probably wouldn't recognize what I had purchased. So we are asking you to tell us what it was you purchased and how it ties into COVID. 
Again, the receipts can go back as far as March 1st, 2020, and will go to November 1st, 2020, if you're awarded. Invoices, estimates, proposals are not considered as receipts. So you'll have to send us the final receipt so that we could then reimburse you. But I do believe that the invoice and the estimates and the proposals are imperative because it's gonna help you understand what amount to ask for. Because remember in the application, we're gonna ask you, how much would you like to receive? Now, this is just a request. No impact if it's not able to happen. But when you're uploading your files, if you're gonna upload your save affidavit, can you do us a favor and not upload Canon 5160 page one document? Just save the name to save affidavit. It makes it much easier on our end. Not required, but just makes it easier on our end. Second, this one is important. Before you upload any of your documents, you can redact any personal information. I don't need to know your driver's license number. You will have to give it for the save affidavit, but not for us. I don't need to need that. Uh, any social security numbers should not be uploaded. Do not send us that information, please. Second is lastly, key importance. We are gonna communicate with you via email. So if you list your general business email and no one really checks that but once a month, you are gonna miss our communications. So please ensure that the email that you use is the one that you check very frequently and you want us to communicate with you with, okay? I would be very disappointed if you missed the deadline because you missed one of our emails. So please make sure that that email is the one that you want us to use when we reach out. All right, so that's the resurgence grant. Let's go to the other grant before we get to questions, okay? The next grant is the Strength and Beauty Grant. And the purpose of this grant, and I want to specifically call out and thank Mayor Keisha Lansbottoms for her dedication on this. She personally fundraised for this grant, and it is really to help support those in our cosmetology industry that has suffered a loss due to COVID-19. And she was able to fundraise, uh, fundraise and provide enough funds to open up this application up again. The way it works is the grant amount for this will be $1,000 per applicant. And so again, these can be used for, the grant can be used for anything to cover costs in terms of financial obligations or food or housing or utilities, whatever the individual needs, because we know that everybody within this industry have really been hit hard by COVID-19. What is required? Your eligibility requirements for this program, one is you have to either live in the city or work in the city of Atlanta for at least six months. You have to have your cosmetology license from the state of Georgia and it has to be current. And the cosmetology industry really is in the areas of nail technician, hair, barber. I mean, you see the list there of examples, but as long as you have that cosmetology license, you qualify. Now, we're also gonna ask you to establish your loss as a result of COVID-19. And then we just want to understand what is the unmet need that you have? Because I wish I could say there are a lot abundance of dollars, but we wanna make sure that we can get to individuals that need it the most. So the requirements, we've really tried to streamline there. We definitely need your save affidavit, your driver's license, proof of residence, verification of income, your proof of cosmetology work and your license. So really limited to six items that we need. Now, in terms of the project timeline, same is the applications open August 10th. Applications close August 31st at 5 p.m. Please make sure August 31st, which is a Monday at 5 p.m. So let me give you some broad over highlights. Two programs at Invest Atlanta running concurrently, both close August 31st at 5 p.m. The resurgence program, $50,000 max, 40,000 of that is in a cash infusion max, and 10,000 max for technical assistance. The second program is the Strength and Beauty and is for anyone who's in the cosmetology industry and well, the grant amount is $1,000. All right. Let's just go over some very important points I want to get 
So your next question is, okay, that sounds good, but how do I get a hold of Investland if I have any questions? Well, I would tell you the first thing to do is please make sure that you go to our website at www.investatlanta.com. That's where you have all of the information. It's right there on the upper right. You just have to click there and off you go. Our customer service hotline, 404-880-7255. Please, we have really spent some time to ensure that people can open that up and address your questions for you. Now, Invest Atlanta is open as many government entities from nine to five, Monday through Friday. What I like to say is that if any of you are like me, sometimes, hate to say this, I wait till the last minute to do things. If that happens to be you and you are working on August 29th, a Saturday, or August 30th, a Sunday, which I completely understand, is we will have our hotline open at that time from nine to five on Saturday and Sunday. It's just that Saturday and Sunday. Why? because we wanna make ourselves available to you should you have any questions. So please make sure you use that if you need to. Um, we're here to try to answer your questions. So you could go to our website, you could call us our customer service hotline, or you can email us. And if you are interested in emailing us, the two email addresses are on your screen, depending on which program you are interested on, interested in. The last way you could communicate with us, and this one I am super excited about, is for the first time, Invest Atlanta is also pivoting, and we have a chat function on our website. So if you're interested in talking to us via our chat, you can also do that as well. So again, it may take a, a little bit of time, but all of those resources are available to you. We want to be there to communicate in the form that you want to communicate with us with. And really, they are there to answer any last minute questions you may have. Now, with that said, we've done several of these seminars and there usually are a few questions that we see that come up over and over again. So what we'd like to do is see if I can answer them for you. The first is why does my business have to be in the city of Atlanta to qualify? Well, it has to be in the city of Atlanta because this program was the direct allocation from the US Department of Treasury that came to the city of Atlanta. So these, this program is specifically for city of Atlanta businesses. With that said, there are many other cities that have created their own small business program. And if you're interested in those, please go to those cities. Second, are sole proprietors and home-based businesses eligible for the resurgence grant list, grant fund, excuse me? Yes, you are. As long as you have a city of Atlanta business license and you meet all other eligibility criteria. Remember we went over those four items. So please make sure that you review the four items. You look at the ineligible list, but yes, just because you're a home-based business does not mean you will not be eligible. Next slide. Are nonprofits eligible for the resurgence grant fund? I am sorry to report that no, nonprofits are not eligible for the resurgence grant fund. But please, there are other resources for nonprofits, including the Community Foundation, that it's my understanding they have awarded about $17 million for uh, nonprofits in the region. So please look to other resources. And also you could look to our website. In our website, you will find other programs that potentially are available to you. Can resurgence fund be used to cover payroll? The answer is no. This is a reimbursable grant and cannot be used to cover payroll. Why? Well, this is not an Invest Atlanta request. This is a Department of Treasury. They have specifically said that the cost or, or this grant could cover costs to help businesses prepare for post-COVID. So what additional expenses have you had to incur to be able to cover your expenses to deal with COVID? Payroll, rent, those are all items you would have had to pay for anyways. And so 
The guidelines from Treasurer are very clear. It has to be for items that you have purchased above and beyond your regular course of business, which you would not have purchased had we had not been in a global health pandemic. Okay, last, uh, fifth one. I haven't received my 2020 City of Atlanta business license yet. Do I still qualify? Yes, you do. We understand that our colleagues at the City of Atlanta, because everybody is working from home, it's taking a little bit longer to get the application, the business license out to businesses. All we are asking, however, is that you send us a proof of payment. So as long as you've paid is all we're asking for. So send us your proof of payment or your uh, cash cleared check, something that can show that you've actually paid for your business license. Next one. If I have already received PPP and other CARES Act funds, can I still apply for the resurgence fund? Yes, you can. But in the application, we are going to ask you, have you received any PPP funds? So we would ask that you please respond there how much you have received. But it just because you've received does not make you ineligible. Number seven, what documents should I upload as a substitution if I don't have employees and can't show payroll? Then please, what I would do is submit a statement that tells us that, that you have no employees, hence no payroll, and just upload that document. All right? So I hope that those questions have really helped to uh, uh, address some of your questions. I am very encouraged about the interest and please, I just want to say thank you to each of you businesses for your commitment to the city and know we're doing all we can to try to be as helpful as possible and provide as many alternatives and support as we can. So with that, I'm going to open it up to my colleagues, Matt and Lexi, who are going to begin to go through some of the questions that we're receiving from you live on our Facebook Live or on our chat. Wonderful. Thanks, Eloisa, for that informative presentation. It's nice to have everybody here tonight. I'm going to ask Lexi to start with the questions that are on Facebook, and then we'll get to the questions in the chat. Thanks again for that. We currently do not have any questions posted on the Facebook Live, so I'm going to throw it back to the chat. Terrific. Thanks, Lexi. And I'd also add, if we, if, if we aren't able to get to your question or if, um, you need more and additional information, please do use the resources that Eloisa explained to get in touch with the applicant, ser applicant service team. They're there to help you and, and make sure that this is, um, you get everything you need in a smooth process. Um, the first question I have here, Jennifer asks, what if, if I have a receipt for one of 13 stores, do we prorate it? So I think what she's asking there is that if the expense has been made on a multi-location business overall um, and the affected store, they're, they're submitting for one affected store, should they submit a prorated per receipt? So if you are submitting for one of your 13 businesses, then yes, I would suggest that you prorate the expense at the one business that you are submitting for. Now, I will tell you that if you have one, one business license for the 13, so you have one business license for the 13, you could cut it, it's one application, so you can just submit it as one. But if you have 13 business licenses and then one receipt for the 13 business license, then you would prorate it. I hope I answered, I hope that was clear. Thanks for that. We've received a lot of questions about um, timing of receipts and whether or not uh, an applicant or a receipt or an expense incurred after the application close date. So in September, October, that time frame would be eligible for reimbursement. So if you go ahead and um, address that again, Eloise, and I would say um, if you've asked that question, hopefully this will um, answer your question. And uh, again, if you need more information, we can address that uh, individually. So the way the receipts work, because this is a reimbursable grant, is the time frame for your receipts are March 1st, 2019 through November 1st, 2019. 
wait a minute, let me start again. Your timing of your receipts are March 1st, 2020 through November, November 1st, 2020. I apologize, 2020 to be clear. So as long as the receipt is in that time period, you will be able to use that. So what I would do is if you submit today on August 31st, you could submit any receipts that you received from March 1st through August 31st, 2020. And then I would make sure you estimate or you start to look at what other expenses you need to make from August 31st through November 1st. When you add all of that together, that let's assume that that comes out to 25,000. Then in the application, make sure you say, I am applying for 25,000. Now you could submit the receipts you have and then we'll work with you until November 1st to get the rest in. So we recognize that some businesses are really tight on cash flow right now. So it will be important for them to know, have I been awarded and what's the up to amount? And then once they understand if they've been awarded, they'd feel more comfortable to go make the expense and then come get reimbursed. So again, as long as your receipt covers the March 1st through no, no, November 1st, 2020 date is what we are asking for. Okay, and I wanna be very clear on that. So just make sure if you have any questions, what we'll do is we will go walk you through this process once you've been awarded. But the one caution I will tell you is make sure you estimate very clearly when we ask you how much are you applying for? Because if you say I'm applying for 10,000, you're gonna get an award letter if, if selected, you'll get an award letter for us that says up to 10,000. You will not be able to come back to us and say, guess what, I, mis I misestimated and I really need 25,000. We will not be able to increase your amount. So please make sure that you, you think about what expenses you'll have to make in the future. Terrific. Thanks for that, Eloisa. A few questions here about timing. I know you went over the time frame, but um, the questions are around how soon will the funds become available if approved? Okay, so applications will be due, uh, due August 31st. Thank you very much, Lexi. We suspect that we'll be able to announce the awards October 5th. So if you are a business that has submitted $30,000 of receipt or $40,000 of receipts, then you would be we're really ready to go because we would take in the application, see all the receipts, approve the receipts, and then get you paid. And the way it will work is pretty much you submit your receipts to us on Wednesday, a cut, a check will be cut on the following Monday. It will be that quick. So it could potentially, let's assume August 5th, a week later, I'd say the week later after August 5th, you pretend, or a week and a half, you potentially could, a check would be cut. Now, please allow time for the mailing because then we got to mail the check to you. So that gives you a sense of how quickly we are trying to get these funds out. Again, we have put a team together to try to move this very quickly because in the end, this program closes December 31st and we need to ensure that those funds are out the door. So that's how quickly we're gonna turn these. But in either case, let's say we get awarded. So that's track one. Let's say and you're, uh, you're on track two, you haven't submitted all your receipts. No problem. It does not impact your score in any way, whether you turn in receipts or not. So once you um, get awarded and let's say you only have two or three receipts. And then now that you know you're up to 30,000 is your request and that's what you've been awarded then you can go make that expense and submit the receipt. Now, the only thing is we're asking, make sure you submit all your receipts by November 1. If you get it to us before Wednesday, then we'll have a check cut to you by Monday and then allow for US Postal Service delivery. Terrific. Uh, Johnny has a question. It says, if your business was burglarized, causing a stop in business directly before COVID-19 hit, and COVID-19 caused a delay in not only business, but renovations, would your business be eligible? I would say if you had an active city of Atlanta business license and you are, were you, so you were renovating, you weren't operating, but you're, you're a business you had rent, you had operated, right? So I would say as long as you have a current city of Atlanta business license, 
and you were operating and maybe you closed for several weeks just for the renovations, you were still in essence open. Well, you were closed doing the renovating, but you were operating as a business, you'd still be eligible. So again, make sure you have a current city of Atlanta business license. You can show that you were operating as of 2019, except for the several, what, three weeks or so for renovations, you have less than 250 employees and you're able to demonstrate how the business interruption has resulted in COVID, then you would be eligible. Great, another question here from James. Can a principal with two different qualifying businesses, parentheses, two entities with different business licenses, so in other words, two licenses, receive two grants? Yes, it's per business license. So it could be one owner with three business licenses, could make three applications. Next question from Jackie is, what is the SAVE affidavit? The SAVE affidavit is a document that the state of Georgia requires that basically ensures that every, that the person is eligible to be in this country and to do business. So it verifies their status. So if you are a US citizen or a resident, you have no problems. Uh, if you aren't, then we just want to verify that you're here legally. Great. Now I will mention, just taking a second as you look at the questions, Matt, is if we say you, you've gone through the grant application and it's not working for you, or it's working, and remember the grant does not cover capital expenditure, so let's make sure you, you just need to expand your capital, which has nothing, your products or your equipment, let me start. You need to expand your equipment and it really has nothing to do with COVID and you are looking for an alternative source. So today's conversation here was to talk about the grant opportunities for you. But if the grant, if you need another alternative to buy more capital expenditure products, uh, a, another refrigerator or a stove or whatever the changes are, and you need another option, Invest Atlanta, and I really like to thank with the leadership of Lonnie Sabor, has applied for two additional loan funds. And this has resulted in our ability to do two things. Uh, it's the grants are the best, I understand, but this I think is probably the best loan in town. We are offering a loan for 3% interest with no payments until March 2021. There's no application cost as well. We've, we've ended all applications as we are in this global pandemic. So please, if you can marry both, they're not exclusive, you can ask for both, or if the grant is not what you need, then please use our loan program. Again, 3% interest, uh, March, 2021 would be the first payment due. Great, uh, interesting uh, question here. I'm a photographer and need to buy a vehicle so that I can service pregnant clients that can't come to my studio due to COVID. Will the grant cover me purchasing a vehicle? Yep, if you didn't have a vehicle before, um, and then we also, in your case, there's a photographer, but we also thought of scenarios like, let's say a florist who is now going to deliver flowers and they didn't deliver flowers before. Um, in your case, you never had a vehicle to go to someone's house before they would come to your studio. So to us, you, we would just have to make sure we make the case very clear. You are buying this vehicle now post COVID, it's because you're changing your business model so that you can continue to adapt to the new environment. So remember, we are your advocates at Invest Atlanta. We wanna make sure that your costs that you are asking to be reimbursed uh, get covered by treasury. So we are gonna look for ways to try to make that happen. Um, but, but please, we got to make sure that the case is very tight and it's very clear because if in your, it, let's just assume if the flower shop had a, a breadth of vehicles, then it's a harder case for us to make that this is a pivot because you already had a vehicle. So it wouldn't count for replacing vehicles because you've already had them. But if you didn't have them, then we'd have to make that case, especially when it comes to capital because they've said they don't traditionally do not want to reimburse capital expenditure. So let me give you another example. I had a business call me, it was a factory. And they had asked if we could cover 
their expense for a conveyor belt. So on the surface, I said, well, on the surface, it appears to me you can't because that's a capital expenditure, but tell me why did you buy conveyor belts? And they told me that CDC has said that you and your factory have to maintain six feet social distancing for your employee's safety. And so they had to put the conveyor belt in to ensure the six foot distancing. Totally makes sense now. Very, they would have not purchased those conveyor belts if it was not for COVID. To me, that is an expense that would comply. Terrific. Um, there's been several questions that talk about, I, I guess, what I would call proof of purchase. And I think what the, the questioners are asking is whether alternate forms of proof of purchase, for example, like a bank statement or maybe a, a, a cash check or something to that effect, um, can suffice for you know traditional receipt. No, we're going to have to see the itemized receipt, what was purchased. Now, if they don't give receipts and it's an invoice or something, that's what we'll have to see. But somehow, uh, now, all of you businesses have dealt with IRS and the federal government and understand how strict they can be. So we're going to make sure that all our receipts are very clear as to what was purchased. So even if, you know, the other question I've received is how it's not, it's just an itemized, it's the receipt where you get and it's just your signature, that one won't work. It really has to be an itemized receipt so we could prove that the expenses made were the plexiglass, the PPE, whatever that was purchased and what it was used for. So it has to be very clear. Great. Another question here, I'm a catering company. I've had to pivot from catering to prepared meal delivery. Would I submit the food costs for the switch to this platform or everything but the food costs? Yeah, not the food costs because it was still, it, that's the part of your business. You would still have to purchase food anyways because you're, a, you know, it was either made or, or so the food does not make sense because you would have had to at least purchase that anyways. But was there any other costs that you have made uh, or pur purchases you've had to make as a result, I don't know. Have you had to uh, purchase? I, I have okay. So let me also say this: I am not an expert in your field, so you're going to have to help me help you understand what is it that you had to buy to be able to comply with CDC guidelines. I don't know. If, I don't know. Does CDC require special boxes? Does it require you to wear special gloves? Is it requiring you to do? cleaning twice a day so that you could come in and clean in the morning and come and clean at night, that extra cleaning because of CDC, which you typically didn't do, what could be covered. If you had a special box or a delivery or whatever it is that is a different additional cost as a result of COVID needs to be, can be, um, can be included. Great, thanks for that, Eloisa. There's been several people who've asked questions about uh, technology scenarios where investments in technology have been made to pivot or adopt to COVID business environment. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, technology as an eligible expense and maybe give an example or two? Yeah, of course. So if I'm a business and I need to do my annual website maintenance, mm, not covered. But if I'm a business that has changed my business plan and I am now taking more orders or I'm taking orders, maybe you did it in the past uh, online and I need to now order or add a feature where I can even accept credit cards online and I need to add more memory or you know, back end stuff to make the website happen. All of those expenses, as long as we could tie it to look, I've changed my business to go online and these are the expenses I need to cover, then that would work. Uh, but we would just have to be very specific to be able to identify the difference between regular website maintenance and a website overhaul because now I'm going completely online and I've closed my business doors uh, completely. And so I'm still doing everything online now and that required all of this additional investment or you kept your store open and you still did that. I mean, there really are a whole bunch of scenarios, but again, as long as we can completely tie your expense to being able to do business and operate as a result of post COVID is what we're looking to, to, to highlight. Awesome. There's been a few questions about, um, I, I guess, timing of eligible businesses. In other words, um, the period during which you needed to be in business and operating 
Can you go over that again, the, the time period, and then explain a little bit why we have that requirement or why that requirement is in, is in place? Right. So here, what we're asking is your eligibility is you have to have an active city of Atlanta business license. Okay, so make sure that it's current. And then second, we're asking that you had been in business and operating since March 1, 2019. And this is because we're really trying to get to some of our longer term businesses in the city. We want to make sure that those businesses have an opportunity because we have heard and, and really spoken with many businesses that they have not received any aid. And so we just want to make sure that our businesses that have been consistent and solid supporters of the city of Atlanta, all businesses are important. Let me just say that, but we definitely want to make sure that those that have been here the longest uh, definitely can participate in this program. Terrific. Um, also several questions about whether or not um, uh, lost income due to lost business is uh, an eligible expense, particularly if you need to pay yourself as an independent business professional or pay staff. So Department of Treasury has been very clear. This cannot be used for revenue replacement or revenue loss. So the answer is no. And that is not an Invest Atlanta requirement. That's a Department of Treasury requirement. Requirement. Great. Um, we have a question on from Facebook, real quick. Uh, okay. Melford is asking if we had to bring the business in house for us, our basement, and print ourselves instead of outsourcing. Can that be covered to fix up a room? No, I would probably say not because if you were at a location, you would probably have to pay rent, right? So here, even though you're probably not paying rent, there is some cost of renovation. Thank you. Great. Um, here's another timing related question, Eloisa. Uh, this one says, do we need to return the grant if we can't provide enough receipts by the deadline in November? So what we're doing is we're going to give you an, a, so assuming you get a positive thing, you get awarded, you will get a letter from Invest Atlanta that says you have been awarded up to $30,000. So we won't give you the money because it's a reimbursable grant. So then what will happen is you will have until November 1st to get us receipts that total up to $30,000. If by November 1, we do not receive your receipts up to $30,000, then what we will do is we will reallocate some of your funds to another business. So yes, and the reason why is because Department of Treasury has been very clear that if we have not spent all the funds, meaning the funds out of the door, by December 31st, then we will have to return those. And I would hate to do that. So doing all we can to ensure that the funds are spent here in the city of Atlanta. Great. A uh, couple questions related to the selection process. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yes. So what we've done is we will receive, We as of today, now I heard this morning, I don't know where we are this evening, but as of this morning, we had about 500 applications. So we suspect that we're gonna have somewhere around 3,000 or so applications um, definitely started. We'll see how many get submitted. We, we hope as many as possible. We have then um, asked an external review. We will then package all of those application and we have an external review committee that will be reviewing them. And that's why I've highlighted some of the questions that we are, we've asked you to consider, make sure they're as robust as possible. Those applications will be scored and then we will take the highest scores and begin to award the applications. Great information. Uh, next question here, and I think this, um, probably this, this involves technical assistance and the type of services that are available for reimbursement. Uh, question from Dwight is, if, if the expenses to retool operations were to require $50,000 in uh, tech services and the reimbursement program allots only 10,000 for tech services, would the remaining 40,000 in tech services qualify for the reimbursement? So I would maybe start and just 
explain the difference between the uh, technical assistance and the grant and then address Dwight's specific scenario. Thanks, Dwight. Um, that's the first time I've been asked that one. I love it. Every time I do one of these, I get a new question. Uh, I had been asked the other way around, but not this way. Uh, so the way we had planned it was $40,000 in receipts and up to $10,000 for technical assistance. Uh, we, in your scenario, you're saying you got the up to, up to amount on the infusion of cash, but on the technical assistance, 50,000. The way it is written now is that you get up to 10,000 for technical assistance. So if you needed more help than the 10,000, let's just say you're saying 50,000, then that 40,000 would have to be covered by you, the business. Um, so that is why what we've done is we've been very clear with our technical service providers because you have to use our list of technical service providers. You may ask, why do we have to use your list, Eloisa? Because Department of Treasury has said that we need to procure any outside services. So that is why we issued an RFQ and we procured it. So yes, you have to use our technical assistance providers and you have a breath to choose from. Each of them know that they cannot provide more service than $10,000. So if you then want more service from any of those, you will have to enter into a separate arrangement with them outside of this program. Great, thank you. Carl asks, can the grant be used to cover expenses like rent, utilities and or lost revenue for businesses that have had to remain closed through the quarantine. So that's rent, utilities, and lost revenue, three different types of um, financial implications. No, the funds cannot be used for rent or revenue loss. Is this an Invest Atlanta choice? No, it's clearly stated in the Department of Treasury that those fund, these funds in particular cannot be used for that. So again, we are trying to ensure that there's a balance between getting out the grant and staying in compliance with the Department of Treasury. And they have been very clear. If it's an expense that you would have had to make, this funds cannot be used for that. Now, I will tell you that if you're running into challenges and you need other options, then please look at our loan programs. Great, and we've had several questions uh, on the lo loan programs and we're directing people to Invest Atlanta's website for more information there. Perfect. Um, we're coming up on time. I think we'll take a, a couple more and I've asked Lexi to put the slide up on the screen that has the contact information. Again, if we didn't get your question or you need more information, um, please choose one of those um, options there to get more information. We have people available to assist you. Another, another question here is, um, can the grant money be used to cover marketing expenses incurred during COVID for having to put my business online or is that only the technology grant? No, if we can, if we can clearly demonstrate that you, this is not your regular spend on marketing and this is additional spend. Now that one's going to be a little harder for us to prove, but if we could prove it, I think we can get this through Department of Treasury. But again, we're going to have to be very clear that this is not your regular marketing program, but that you've had to really communicate to businesses or to customers that we are no longer open at our facility, but we are still open for your business and this is how you can apply or this is how you can reach us. So again, it would have to be very clear on how we express that and we'd have to figure out how we prove that. Uh, but if we can, then yes, I think that can be covered through department of, through this grant. Okay. Uh, Leslie asks, can the grant be used for training classes, COVID-19 training certificates? So that would involve perhaps if a, biz if a, a business needs a consultation on how to operate differently or advice or things of that nature, would that be considered an eligible expense? You know, you said COVID training, and I wonder if you're meaning that you have to train your employees on, um, on new how maybe they're in the food service and so the requirements are for them to take additional courses to how to handle the food i think again as long as we can we can link that this is additional training that is you would have not you had otherwise done because of covid19 i think we could get that covered through treasury 
So, but again, we got to make sure there's a clear alignment and a link to the training and how the training was needed for us to adjust to post COVID. Great. Um, one additional question here. Are there any restrictions on purchases made outside of the country in terms of a reimbursable expense? Well, on that one, um, again, as long as you, again, we are gonna rely on you as a business and an expert. If I had to make an assumption, if you had to go buy a special equipment or you had to go buy something because of post COVID specifically, the question where you had to um, uh, purchase it or where the purchase was made, doesn't matter as long as we have a receipt and then we could tie whatever it is you purchased. Yeah, there's no restrictions on where you buy them. Thanks for that. Uh, a couple of minutes over, so we're gonna take one more and then wrap up. And we really appreciate everybody joining for us tonight. Why is the requirement that you have to have to have ha that you have to have been in business since March 2019? Because what we're trying to do is again support the businesses that have been the longest in the city. Trying to, and it's a really a year. We want to make sure that um, we want to make sure that we're recognizing those businesses that have been in the city. Great, thanks for that response, Elisa. Very, very helpful. So I think that's it for questions this evening. All right, well, I first, again, wanna thank you for your time and joining us today. Uh, we're trying to be as available as possible. So I'm glad our contact lists are up on the screen. And please, if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you for your commitment to the city. Thank you for what you do for the city of Atlanta residents. And please know that here at Invest Atlanta, we're doing all we can to ensure not only your su success today, but in the future, because we know as a community, we are gonna rise up and just even be better than we were before. So thank you very much for your time today.